Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining my talk. So today, I'm going to present you uh, an Apache, so an indexer for Apache Solar that we developed for one of our client. So we use the MapReduce uh, pattern implemented over, over serverless technology to, do, to implement it. So before starting, oh, I don't, it doesn't change. Try to unplug it. What's going on? Mine is okay. I don't know. Maybe try to to change something. Ah, oh. and now. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, before starting, a few words about myself. Uh, my name is Daniel Antuzzi. I'm a food lover, so if you want to uh, tell me something, you can find me at the entrance where there is food. By the way, I got a master's degree at the University of Pisa, and I've been working for four years in uh, finance, and other two years in uh, AWS. And in the last three years, I've been working for CIS. I'm passionate about algorithms and data structure. So I always love to experiment new things and new technologies. So I mentioned CIS. So we are a company, actually we work with search services. We are headquarters in London, even if we are spread all around Europe and Mid-East. Mid so we are expert of Lucene, uh, Solar, Elasticsearch, OpenSearch, we work with them. Uh, and we always, always love to contribute back to the community through open source contributions, uh, blog posts, and talks, for example. So we are actively researching, try to reduce the gap between academia and industry. Uh, you can see our hot trends. But today, I'm not, gonna, I'm not, I'm not gonna talk about any of them. So uh, what we see today is, uh, we know the problem of indexing. I mean, we have data spread it into multiple tables in our uh, relational database. So we want to see what is the problem of combining them. Then I can in quickly introduce MapReduce. Uh, finally, then we see uh, how we can use MapReduce to combine database records. And finally, we can look at my implementation where I get inspired by MapReduce and, and but, but I use serverless technologies in AWS. And finally, we can see some results. So I guess everybody knows, uh, but let's quickly uh, go and see the problem. Uh, we have data in our SQL database that are spread into multiple tables uh, because we don't want repetitions. We, and yeah, we, th this, is, this is the normal way to store data. So let's suppose we have songs, we want to index songs. So in our database, we may, maybe have one table, so one some table, uh, some song can have tags, but all information about tags are stored into another table. Uh, same story with albums and composer. But what we want at the end of the game is, we want some solar documents that aggregates all those, inf all those information coming from different uh, database records. So, what are possible solutions? Let's start with the trivial one, and then me mega select where we join all the tables all together. That's simple, but uh, the number of results coming, coming from this query can be really, really high, so, the solution is not scalable at all because, and then there is also a lot of work from the database side. Another solution that I saw actually implemented uh, somewhere, you can list through overs over the songs, and then for each song, you can ping the database again, say, okay, give me all composer for that song, give me all tags for that song, give me all albums. In this way, it's a bit more scalable, maybe, but we are bombarding the database with a tons of queries, a small one. So the database for each query has to optimize it, generate the, um, 
uh, the plan, execute it. So there is a lot of work from database side. As a result, the solution is pretty slow. So as I spoiled before, I didn't proceed with any of those um, solutions. But I got in, actually, uh, we proceed with the map reduce. How many of you know map reduce? I've been working with Apache, so I mean, Hadoop, Spark, I mean, I guess it's pretty, it's pretty famous. By the way, I don't know about the audience. Okay, let's quickly introduce MapReduce. Uh, so this is a distributed, distributed pattern uh, to access big data over a distributed file system. Has been introduced in 2004 by some Google, Google engineer. And it allows us to simply define two functions, map and reduce. Then the framework, the most famous are Apache, Hadoop, Spark, there are others. By the way, the framework does the rest. So let's quickly um, see one, uh, the hello world of the map reduce. Sorry for the guys who already knows, but I want everybody aligned <laughs> on this one. So uh, the trivial example is the word count. So I have a document and I want to count how many occurrences of each word, uh, I mean, I have for each of each word. So if I have just a document, this is a trivial operation. I mean, I can sort all the words, I can use a data structure, and, and I can count them. But how about if I want to do, for example, for the whole Wikipedia pages? I have multiple pages, so for each word, I should know where the word, what are the pages that contain the word, where those pages are stored, so it can be quite trivial. So uh, what should I do using MapReduce? I split the, our, my data set into smaller chunks that are stored somewhere in uh, some node. And then for each of the, of the chunks, I apply the map function. So the map function uh, gets as a, uh, this piece of information as, a, as an input and produce a list of key value pairs. In our example, uh, this, the mapper gets the uh, single page and produce a list of uh, uh, okay, key value pairs where the key is the word because we want to aggregate by the word and the value is the number of occurrences of that word in that page. So uh, the framework that, so does the shuffle, so reorder all the key value pairs uh, based on the key and group together all the, all the values and they store somewhere in some, um, some nodes. For example, uh, there were two different, I don't know, Berlin has been mentioned uh, twice in two nodes, uh, actually in two files executed, elaborated from um, uh, Mapper in two different nodes. So we produced two values, five occurrences in the first node and one occurrence in the second node. They are grouped together and the result is put on another node, no, still the node one in my example. So uh, for each of these results, we apply the, the reducer. So in this simple example, we just want to count the number of occurrences. So the reducer gets all the values and sum up all of them. This is pretty simple. How can we use it for uh, combining database records? So coming back to our example, we have songs and songs, uh, and we have other, uh, other tables like albums, tags, and composer. So first of all, we need to identify our key. So we want to index the final document. The, so in the final index, we have documents, and documents are identified by song ID. So song, uh, for each of the, uh, of the table, for each of information, piece of information, we want to assign the song ID. So we can extract the table songs. Then we can, elaborate, we can go table by table, joining what we need to get the song ID. So for example, for the table albums, we want to extract all album, all album name, album information, plus the song ID. Um, for composer, all composer information, and the song ID. This is pretty simple queries, and we can quickly do it. So at the end, we store 
all the results of those queries in some files. For example, we have a file song that, where we have all information about the songs, I don't know, title, or, um, descriptions, BPM, and so on, and the song ID. Same story for albums, same story for uh, composers. What, just a note, uh, if an album, for example, uh, contain multiple songs, for example, let's see the best of Mozart that contains, uh, in this example, two songs, we, want, we are going to replicate the information about the album twice, one for each song. And that's correct, because each piece of information should be assigned to a single final document. One is for the document uh, 345, the other one is for the document 594. So, the map is simple. We apply uh, the mapper to each, piece, to each file, and we map the original database record to the song ID in our example. Actually, we can do two different ways. So, uh, what I did in my implementation, I mapped uh, the full record into the song ID, but actually, in theory, you can produce multiple key value pairs one for each attribute, where the key is always the same, is the song ID. And then there is one value, one pair, I mean, the value is the, the, the attribute, I don't know, one value for uh, title, another value for um, description, and then uh, in the other query, one value for the album name, another value for the, I don't know, other information about albums. By the way, both solution works. So, the shuffle, implemented by the framework. I want to keep more high level as possible. So generate a data structure, one for each song ID, and in this structure, like file or something memory, we have all information about that song ID. So, and this is pretty simple because the reduce that had became so simple so, uh, to implement. Because where, while I need to create my document ID, my document, I don't need to search and see where uh, each uh, field, each, each attribute is stored, in what table, and so on. Everything is in the same file, same data structure in memory. Uh, so, what was my, uh, impl my implementation? I implement it in uh, AWS. So, okay, I guess everybody knows everything here. Uh, by the way, just to have everybody aligned, uh, we, uh, we have our SQL database where all data are, inform are stored. Uh, we use AWS Lambda functions that allows you to run a piece of code over without caring about where the code is running and what is the operating system and so on. We just run it. Uh, we use S3 bucket, and this is, a, this is another service that allows you to store file into multi, one or multiple buckets. We use SQS, so this is a queue, mostly. Uh, there are other functionality we can see afterwards. DynamoDB is a key value database. A uh, step function is uh, an orchestrator of uh, lambda functions that allows you to implement a um, finite state automata. And something that is pretty important is the distributed map. This is a functionality that step function introduced uh, maybe in December 2023, if I remember, no, 2022, if I remember correctly. So, uh, this rebooted map allows you to uh, list all, all files in an S3 bucket, and for each file, it invokes one lambda function. So, uh, you can elaborate multiple files from S3 bucket in parallel, and it supports up to 10,000 uh, lambda functions in parallel. And finally, uh, we have Apache Solar, uh, but we can use OpenSearch, Elasticsearch, or whatever you want. So what I did, I implemented I implement this, my indexer as a pipeline. So we have the fetch, 
the fetcher that gets the data from the database, execute all the queries, and run and push all the files into an S3 bucket that I call it input from DB. I don't have much fantasy. Then for each one of those files, uh, we, using this button map, we invoke one lambda file, one lambda function for each file that execute the mapper. <coughs> All the results are stored into a, another bucket that is a key bucket. Then we will see some details. So in this bucket, we will see one file for each of the final document. And we have all those information in about the final document in this file. Finally, we call the reduce, one for each file, that instead of pushing directly to Solar, uh, we decoupled uh, the reduce functionality and the pushing to Solar functional functionality because the reducer can be quite fast and we don't want to bombard Solar with a lot of updates altogether. So there's a queue in the middle. And finally, we push to Solar. So let's go in detail uh, our fetcher. So what we do is for each, okay, this is a really simple example, but in practice, unfortunately, it's not as simple as that. Uh, but uh, for each one of the, um, of the table uh, we have in our database, or depending on, on the attribute, we run a different SQL, a SQL query. So we extract, in our example, all the songs. We extract composer, join whatever we need to get the song ID. We extract all the albums, join with other tables to get the song ID. And then instead of saving all of the result, all the, all the record set in a single file, I split this, the record set in multiple files. I don't, I don't know, for example, each uh, 1,000 records, I create a different file. Mostly for two reasons. Uh, one reason is for uh, fetch function performance, because in the meantime, I store, I don't know, the songs part zero. The function can keep streaming from the database all the records for the part one. Then I store the part one and stream for the part two, and I can go a bit faster. Also because the fetch, I mean, each Lambda function has a limit of 15 minutes, so I need to be quite quick. And then splitting into multiple parts allows me in the mapper to elaborate mul multiple files in parallel. Because if I have only three files here, the mapper, ca I can execute only three files in parallel. Sorry. Yeah. <coughs> oh. <coughs> so. <laughs> so let's go <coughs> the map function. For each one of the original file, I'm expecting to find uh, the song ID and all the records. <coughs> so I need to map. I need to create uh, for each key. I, I go to another bucket, the one that I called key bucket, and I create a file for each key. If the file does, uh, already exists, I go and append the record I found at the end of this file, of this file. So we have multiple Lambda functions that access concurrently to this file, to a, a, set, a subset of files. Let's say, for, uh, let's say we run these two, these two documents, so two Lambda functions to elaborate these two documents in parallel. For the song ID13, we have only one occurrence, and so we have only one Lambda function accessing and appending uh, some records into the file song 13. Uh, but for the song 15, I possibly have two lambda functions accesses, accessing concurrently to the same file to store uh, and to append the record. So I need, a way, I need a way to, I need a lock. So I mean, I'm not working locally, so I don't have POSIX, uh, MUTEX, and so on. So I need to find, and, and, and I need an easy boot lock. There are some libraries uh, implementing it. Uh, actually, they're still using uh, DynamoDB. Unfortunately, for the language I had to use, I don't, didn't have this, this library available. 
I mean, at least libraries that work. So I implement something. So I, I create a DynamoDB table uh, with three fields, a resource ID, and the resource ID is the key of the file I want to access, a lock ID that this is a unique number generated by the lock function, and expire at. So I need the expire at because this is the timestamp time until this lock is still valid. And this is needed because if a lambda function gets the lock and then crash, nobody called the release. So after a while, normally uh, there is a time step, I mean a timeout of a bit uh, bigger than the uh, function timeout, so uh, lambda function timeout. So after a while, this is gonna, it's gonna die. I mean, this is gonna be no longer valid. And another thing must be quite important, the put, when I create a new lock, should be an automatic put, um, an atomic put, because in the same operation I should verify, uh, I should add my lock only if the lock does not exist yet, and if it's, if it's sixth, it should be expired. Otherwise, I, um, I mean, I return an error. So, okay, just something, oh, I went too far. So what I get at the end of this phase, I get um, my bucket, the key bucket that contains one file for each key, and this key contains all the information about that document, the final document. So if, you, if we look at the theory, this is not only map, this is map and shuffle together. So this is not a proper map reduce, it's a more, uh, I mean, it's get inspired by map reduce. The reducer uh, is simple as that. So we elaborate all files in parallel. For each key, we generate the document and we push it to an SQS. No more than that, really simple. So I don't think I need to say something else. And instead of, so in during the pushing function, instead of uh, getting read, read the, uh, document by document from the queue and generate a batch, because I don't want to bombard solar, I mean, I, mean, uh, for the, I, I want to do a batch update on solar. So instead of doing it and write the code in the Lambda function, what I did is I configure the SQS queue to when, uh, I mean, to call and invoke a Lambda function and passing them some messages as a payload, only when there are a few messages available, okay, in this example I said a batch size of two, so every two messages it calls uh, Lambda functions, but if there is only one message left in the queue, it doesn't wait forever until the next one is coming. After a, some time out, and this example I put 60 seconds, it, it flushed the queue anyway and invokes the Lambda functions. And then actually there is another parameter that is a maximum concurrency, uh, because this is needed, because in this way you can slow down uh, the indexer and see, depending on the, on your metrics in solar, because uh, otherwise you can bombard solar with a lot of information, a lot of updates. And I guess, uh, yeah, it's more or less this one. It's pretty, I mean, we managed to make quite complex solution, pretty simple. And this is not just a prototype, actually. Uh, we start with this idea uh, last year. We start discussing about this one. Uh, we did a PUC. We were quite happy about the results. So we proceed with implementation. And actually, we went live uh, about two months ago, mid-April. And for our customer, uh, they had a huge improvement because they had some standalone indexing, um, indexer running on some machines. Uh, they took, actually they had three instances of, they took about 50 hours on each instance, so as a total 150 hours of execution. And now uh, the indexer takes five hours, even if there's still room for improvement. But yeah, we are, at the moment we are 30 times faster. And even about cost, uh, 
uh, we run it once a day, but the, the, our client had to keep those servers up and running 24-7. Now we run it only, uh, I don't know, that's a few hours every day. So we are uh, in saving a lot of money. So now we spend the 10% of what we were spending before. So that's another huge improvement. So I guess, actually, that's it. I was pretty quick. <laughs> we were a bit last before in the previous talk, so I... <laughs> no, no problem. And yeah, thank you for listening.